But ultimately, the reason that she's wrong is because her approach is backwards and she wants to do what feels good as opposed to what actually does good and would protect people. It feels bad to imprison people. I understand it. I don't want to do it either. But I would rather somebody be imprisoned and the innocent people on the outside of the prison be protected from them than I would to feel nice about it and try to rehabilitate them outside the prison. When somebody commits a crime, especially a violent one, those people need to be behind bars. Hey, fellow tacticians. Be sure to like this video and subscribe and ring that little notification bell. That supports this channel's conservative content, which is good for me, good for you, good for America, but really bad for the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. I probably just wasted your time there. Because we went through all of that and we went through all those statistics and, and what we can do to fix it, but the truth is, we don't need any of that. Because luckily, Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez has solved crime. All of it. We don't have to worry about it ever again because she has this solution which she came up with in, in the brilliant mind that us little people can't even understand of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. This is her solution to crime. And our complete gutting of support in our mental health system, both in the city and across the country, is absolutely correlated with both homelessness and incidents of violent crime. When you actually open the door to a jail and look at who's inside, an enormous amount of people are dealing with untreated mental health issues. And it is not acceptable for us to use jails as garbage, garbage, dispo, garbage uh, uh, bins for human beings. We need to treat people and see them as human. And so it is not a place for us to throw people for whom we don't want to invest in the actual holistic issues of Wait their lives. It. If we want to reduce violent crime, Here it is. if we want to reduce the number of people in our jails, the answer is to stop building more of them. The answer <laughs> is to make sure that we actually build more hospitals. We pay organizers. We get people mental health care and overall health care, employment, etc. It's to support communities, not throw them away. <laughs> so that's AOC's answer. If, if we just want to stop crime, if we want to have less prisoners, let's just stop building jails, guys. Well, yeah, that, that would work. AOC is not wrong on that, because if we stopped arresting people, if we didn't have space to put people in prisons, we would have less prisoners. Th that is correct. That's the approach that we've been going with for the past decade. We've been building less prisons, and as a result, an awful lot of people that should be in prison, that are violent criminals, are out on the streets. That's what's actually been happening. But I, I just looked at that, I was like, man, why didn't I think of that? You know, you, you don't want prisons. You, you don't want prisoners. You just stop building prisons and then everybody's just walking around on the street, you know, murdering people or whatever. Ah, it doesn't matter. At least they're not in prison because that would be bad. It'd be really bad to have lots of prisoners in this country. It's, it's much preferable to just have them out on the streets where they can, you know, kill people and that's fine. But you know what else would stop people from being in prison? Just stop making things illegal. Just not arrest people. That, that would take the incarceration rate down to zero. You know, you see somebody murder a family of five, you just, hey, whatever, you do you. I mean, that's that's a personal choice and we your body, your choice. We would never want to impugn your ability to do that. I guess that's the Democrat logic now is that if we just stop arresting people and let violent criminals roam the streets, then it'd be fine. But by her logic, because you remember that right after that, she said, we need to build less prisons and build more hospitals. Well, if I'm understanding AOC's logic correctly, wouldn't building more hospitals mean that we have more sick people? I mean, if we just stopped building house uh, hospitals, there would be no sick people in hospitals. I mean, yay, that would that would fix everything. I mean, people sure would be dying on the streets or whatever. This is the problem with liberal thinking in a nutshell. Ultimately, they think that their good intentions can wish away evil. The thing is, the child rapist or the axe murderer. He doesn't care that you built less prisons. He doesn't care that you have lots of government programs to help him out. He doesn't care that you're going to be nice to him and put him in a padded cell as opposed to a jail cell, which they won't even do that anymore, and I'll get to that in a second. He's going to do what he's going to do. Evil is a reality, and Democrats don't want to believe that. Because they believe in social engineering, and they believe that when a criminal does something, whether it's kill somebody with a firearm or kill somebody without a firearm, 
See, they believe that society has failed them in some way. They believe that he only did that because of systemic racism or because he had access to guns, which we should take away for his own good. They don't believe that people themselves are actually evil. What they do believe is that everything is run by the government, and the only reason that we don't have a perfect society with no crime and nobody doing anything bad now is because somehow the system has failed these people. You are not an individual capable of free thought and free choices. Ultimately, you are merely a victim of circumstance, and that's how they see every person. But somebody that has a, you know, an absolute moral worldview that sees the world as it actually is accepts that evil is a part of the human condition. And there are things that we can do to mitigate it. There are things that we can do to try to stop it. And I'm in favor of those things. I mean, I would not be a minister if I didn't believe that. But what I'm saying here is they believe that if they just have good enough intentions and put forth government programs and find just the right combination, that there would be no violent crime. And if those evil, dirty Republicans would just stop getting in their way of spending trillions of dollars to do it, then they would have already eliminated it. That's how they see the world. And that's the problem. A conservative or an individualist or a Christian would look at that and say, well, evil exists and we have to deal with it. That doesn't mean that the solutions are always easy or pretty, but on some level that does have to happen at some point. But here's the thing. I'm going to give AOC a little bit of credit here because I do think that I should give credit where credit is due, even when it's somebody I disagree with. Somewhere underneath the idiocy of just not building more prisons so that we won't have any more prisoners, there is actually a good point. I know it's hard for me to believe too, but there is something true underneath all of that. I actually do believe that a lot of prisons have a whole lot of people that are mentally ill and would probably be better served in some kind of mental health facility as opposed to a prison. I know that's going to shock a lot of people, but I think she's actually right on that. The question is, why is that not the case? The institutionalization. This is something that took place from about 1955 to about 1992. We saw a movement in this country. It wasn't the only political movement, but it was largely supported by the Democrats. Some Republicans jumped on board too, but there was a massive move to try to limit the amount of people in insane asylums to the point to where now there's virtually none. We have so deinstitutionalized people that now there's a whole lot of crazy people that really need to be in a mental health care facility that aren't. And that's not to say that we use those as what she described, trash bins to just throw away people we don't want to deal with. I don't think that that's right. I think we should be helping these people as much as possible. And the goal of institutionalization should be to get them out of that institution, to be able to get them to where they're well-adjusted and able to go about normal life without hurting people. I think that's actually a good thing, and I actually think that's one of the very few things that governments on the state level, not the federal level, should be doing. However, the way that she approaches that is completely backwards. Let's get rid of the prisons first, and then we'll think about adding some mental health facilities, and really that should be... No, if we're going to do it, we need to actually do it the way that we used to, and I'm not saying there's, you know... There was some merit to the deinstitutionalization movement. I'm not saying there wasn't. There were, there were some facilities that were not doing things correctly. We don't have time to get into all of that, but that was largely a Democrat movement. 1963, JFK signed the Community Mental Health Center's Construction Act. 1965, Lyndon Baines Johnson created Medicaid spending to go to nursing homes and hospitals, but not mental hospitals. So basically his approach was we're going to starve them out by giving all of this money to nursing homes and hospitals, but give none to mental institutions so that people that are underprivileged or in poor communities that happen to have more of that, that people with mental health problems, that those people get sent to those facilities as opposed to a mental health institution, which would be better equipped to serve that need. 1980, Jimmy Carter signed the Mental Health Systems Act to fund more community health centers, but it focused on a broad range of a community's mental health needs and it lessened the federal government's focus on meeting the needs of those with chronic mental illness. So in other words, when Jimmy Carter signed this into law, it primarily tried to focus on clinics that don't permanently house these people, that it's just kind of come and go as you, you please, which is fine if you have, if you're just somebody that needs therapy, for example. If you're somebody that just needs to go once or twice a week to go talk out your problems with the therapist, 
that bill probably did a pretty good job of funding clinics that could do that. But what it didn't do is people that have schizophrenia or like severe bi bipolar disorder. It didn't help those people because it specifically went to smaller community clinics that were not equipped to handle the severely mentally impaired. And so there were a ton of things that led up to this movement that deinstitutionalized America. And ultimately, I think that AOC's approach is about as logical as her approach to guns. This is the reason that they don't understand why we can't just make gun-free zones and then nobody will ever get shot because you can't bring a gun into a gun-free zone. Well, the criminal doesn't care about your, your gun-free zone sign. The person that wants to commit a mass shooting, he looks at the gun-free zone sign and goes, hey, place where I don't have to worry about anybody else shooting back. That's the reason that 95% of mass shootings over the span of my lifetime have happened in gun-free zones. And this is the same kind of faulty Democrat logic that exists here. They want to be judged based on their intentions, not on their results. I believe that AOC really does want to help these people, and I think she's probably genuine in it, at least to an extent. But ultimately, the reason that she's wrong is because her approach is backwards, and she wants to do what feels good, as opposed to what actually does good and would protect people. It feels bad to imprison people. I understand it. I don't want to do it either. But I would rather somebody be imprisoned and the innocent people on the outside of the prison be protected from them than I would to feel nice about it and try to rehabilitate them outside the prison. When somebody commits a crime, especially a violent one, those people need to be behind bars, including and especially people that do so with firearms. I know that a lot of people on the left think that NRA members like myself, we just want everybody to have a firearm and every, you know, whatever. No, if you're a violent criminal, you need to be in a prison for doing something incorrect and abusing your Second Amendment rights to actually hurt another person. But ultimately, that's the problem. You cannot wish away evil with good intentions, and AOC needs to understand that. So what we're going to do now is we are going to take a quick break, and we will come back with an interview with Chris adams Walla, who is going to give us what is going to go down tonight at Riverwalk Stadium as we play the Birmingham Barons here in Montgomery. So be sure to look forward for that. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you made it all the way to the end, it must mean you like what you saw and should like and subscribe. That or you were just super bored, wound up here by accident, and were too lazy to turn the video off before now. Now, I hope you're the first type of person, but if you happen to be the second type, doesn't really matter to me. I got a view out of you either way. Huh. Profiting off of the laziness of others. This must be what it feels like to be a Democrat.